Hi everyone. I took some inspiration from a Zelda game called Ocarina of Time, uh, which came out a few years back, and I recreated the hookshot. So let's see how that's done. So here we are back in our favorite software. And the first thing I want to do is load a reference image I created. I kind of just made this up a little bit. So download is in the description if you want to use the same. So I'm going to drag that from my, my file explorer. And of course, it's put it in as I was facing with that camera in the viewport. So just going to reset the location just by clicking and dragging here and entering zero and do the same for rotation. And then rotate that 90 degrees in the X axis, which I will do any second now. There we go. As I do that, I'm going to hold down the control key so it snaps by five degree increments. So once we've got it there, I'm just going to turn on this option here. So that makes it unselectable in the viewport. And if you go over to the reference image properties, let's place the depth to back and turn off perspective. So we only see it in orthographic view. And then also let's turn on opacity and put it down to something like 0.25. And also let's reset our cursor, 3D cursor. So shift S and that will place the cursor um, back to the world origin if you select that option. And before we start, let's just create a collection called Hookshot. So I'm going to start with a cylinder. So I press Shift A and let's turn up, turn down, sorry, the vertices to 16. That should be more than enough for this, uh, for this shape. I'm going to rotate that around the X axis, or sorry, the, the Y axis by minus 90, or 90, either way. Switch to wireframe mode so we can see the background. And let's just place that there, roughly in the middle, and press S for scale. And all you want to do here is just position that cylinder as close as you can to the schematic. Now in this part here, that the height is, um, I want to make the height taller, so, but I don't want it to stretch in the, in the x-axis, or scale in the x-axis, so press S for scale, and then shift X, and that will stop it from scaling in the x-axis. Now of course, I'm doing this in, the ob in object mode, and of course that's going to make our rotation and scale um, non-uniform especially the scale, so I applied that with Control A. And then I'm tapping into edit mode. I'm gonna make a loop cut with Control R, just there, to separate that other part. And just put some loop cuts where those main intersections are. And one there as well. Let's switch back to solid mode. Switch to edge mode. I'm going to turn on X-ray. In fact, let's go to wireframe actually. And still in edge mode, let's alt click this um, edge loop there and just scale it down. And this one as well. However, we need to separate this part as a separate object. So let's switch over to solid mode, face mode, alt click that and the one at the back there and press P to separate by selection. And if you alt back into object mode, we've got this one now and this one here. Perfect. Let's go back to wireframe mode. Tab into edit mode, switch to edge mode. I'm just going to hide the other one for a second and just select this one and scale it down. And remember, we split this off, so it now has a hole at the back there. So I'm going to press F to fill it. And that will do as a basic shape. So quite simple so far, nothing too taxing. Switch back to um, wireframe mode. You can see we've got some curvature around all of the edges. So I'm going to tap back into edit mode. And with this edge loop selected with Alt click, I'm then going to press Control B for the bevel command and then scroll the mouse wheel until I get one segment. Something like that. And click to confirm. Let's switch back to solid mode. 
By the way, you can get that menu up with the Z key or the Z key. That will bring you the, uh, the viewport shading mode options. Let's add a subdivision modifier to this object. Turn the levels up to two in the viewport. Still got a bit of work to do. And let's switch back to wireframe mode. Tap into edit mode with the edge selected. I'm also going to select the ones at the back. Let's go back to solid mode actually. So shift alt and select these as well. Now we've got those selected, we can press control B. And add a slight bevel to that as well. However, we, we, we do need to make one change and that's in the shape in the options there. Change it to one instead of 0.5 and that stops it from being rounded off. It's going to tweak the size a little bit. And there you go. And if we turn on the subdiv again now, we've got this lovely shape, nice and clean with some nice edges. However, that subdivision has now made this object a little bit smaller than we like. So I'm going to select everything. And again, we don't want to scale in the x-axis. So when you press S, then press, press Shift X, and that would only scale it in the Y and the Z or the Z. I'll stick to Z because that's what I know. So that's great, but we still have this curvature going on. And that's because the subdivision modifier or well, the subdivision is spilling over into the flat areas, which we don't want. So what we can do to mitigate that is, I'm just gonna move these a little bit, just get the shape we want there. So what I'm gonna do now is add a couple of loop cuts either side of the bevels and increase the mean crease to one. So if I just put two loop cuts there with Control R, then press SX and head over to the mean crease and add increase that to one. That basically means that's a hard line, effectively like a barrier, and the subdivision modifier doesn't extend beyond that. So it really tightens up the curvature around those edge, edge loops we're adding here. So just remember to uh, use the in mean crease of one. And we can select these faces here and press I to inset, just to give it a bit more support in loops or support loops, and I want to delete this face because we're not going to see it. And as before, I'm just going to add some loop cuts with Control R and increase the mean crease to one. Now you're going to see me do this quite a lot in the video, so I will fast forward um, when I'm doing this technique when I need to, because you're going to see it once and then you're going to get quite bored of that, so that's looking pretty good. Okay, let's move on to the second part of the object, which is the part we separated earlier. So let's hide the first one. And of course we have the hole left over from the previous one, so we'll press F to fill that. And as before, we just need some support in edge loops, so I'm gonna use the bevel again. So selecting those two, Control B to bevel. Remember the shape must be one or should be one, and segments two. And then a couple of supporting edge loops there, which I'll add with Control R, S, X, and then increase the mean crease to one. And finally, let's switch to face mode and select these two faces and press I to inset, just a little bit, and increase the mean crease again.
So with that object selected, I pressed Alt D to make a, an instance of it. And then I set the origin to geometry. And of course, being an instance, it also affected the first one. So I'm going to undo that and set the origin to that one first and then move the, the second one that I made a copy of. That makes any sense? And of course we have the hole we made earlier. So let's just tab into edit mode, select the edge loop with uh, alt click and press F to fill it. That's simple enough. Now let's move on to the next part. So I'm going to add another cylinder, rotate it 90 degrees in the Y. I'm going to quickly speed through that because all I'm doing is making it fit that, that portion inside there with some vertex snapping as well. And deleting the either end of the cylinder because we won't be seeing that. And that, that, bit, that bit is done. And of course we've got the non-uniform scale so make sure you apply that. It's really important. And in this case the rotation as well. Okay, let's move on to the next part. And the first part we made is this uh, like brass or copper ring or component to it. So I'm going to add a couple of edge loops there. And going to select these, these um, faces there, the uh, face loop. Press P, separate by selection. If we select the first object again, and then press the forward slash, or question mark key that will isolate it, isolate it in the viewport. And all I'm going to do here is just fill in the gaps we've left behind and some more bevels and support loops. So at this point, it's very straightforward. I'm just repeating the same techniques that I did earlier. In fact, I use a lot of these techniques on everything that I pretty much do. I find it works well. Okay, let's isolate this part now and fill in the uh, the holes. As before, some bevels and some loop, some loops to support it and some insets. Awesome. So far, so good. Okay, let's turn our attention to this part near the handle, which I call the dial part because that's what I made it into in the end. Again, starting with the cylinder. So just manipulate that. Like before, we want to add some bevels and make it a little bit more interesting. So apply the scale and the rotation, of course. And an inset or two there as well. And we don't need that back face. Right click to shade smooth. And with that done, we can select that one now. Press Shift D to duplicate it right click to snap, leave it in place. And of course we need to rotate it 180 degrees on the Y axis. Depending on how you started off, you might be the X axis for you. And once we've done that, we can apply the rotation as well. You can see there, let's apply that with Control A. I also decided to, um, let's just snap that there as well actually. So it's nice and neat. And I also decided to put like a that copper brass ring around that part as well, just for, for a bit of visual interest. Otherwise, everything is going to be the same metallic color material. So I'll make a loop cut just there. And what I'll do is I'll select the face at the front and then press Control Numpad Plus. That will increase the selection as far as that. And then press P to separate by selection. Now we've got two parts there, lovely. Like before, it's going to tab into isolation, uh, not tab, uh, <laughs> forward slash into isolation view mode and just put some bevels and support loops there and a couple of insets and we're done. Cool, that's pretty straightforward so far. I haven't mentioned naming, but it's a good habit to get into. Name your objects. I name mine base something or another. So there you go. This is part one. Thanks for watching. Join me in part two. And uh, for now, take care. See you soon. Bye-bye.